Today we're going to be talking about how to use differentiation to find a power series representation of a given function and its associated radius of convergence. And in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x is equal to 1 divided by the quantity 1 plus x squared. Now there's a couple ways that we can go about this, but one of the most common ways of attacking a problem like this is to find a similar power series that's already well defined. So we have, for example, the power series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x x raised to the n power. We know the terms of that series already are 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. And we know that its sum is 1 divided by 1 minus x. This is a well-known power series. Its sum is somewhat similar to our original function in the sense that we have this rational function. We've got 1 in the numerator of both our original function and this well-known power series sum. In our original denominator, we have the quantity 1 plus x squared. In this denominator, we have 1 minus x. But we can do a couple things to manipulate this well-known power series so that it's more similar to our original function. And then doing so, we might be able to differentiate this well-known power series to get over here on the left-hand side something very similar to our original function f of x that we can use to find the power series representation for our function. So what we want to do in this well-known power power series for x to the n, we want to replace x with negative x everywhere. And the reason for that is because if you see here on the left hand side, if we replace this x value right here with negative x, we'll get 1 minus negative x in this denominator, which is going to be 1 plus x. 1 plus x is closer to our original function than 1 minus x, because we have this quantity 1 plus x squared here. So that'll get us one step closer. And so to do that, we're going to replace x with negative x everywhere. So the left-hand side here, the sum, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus x when we do that. For all of our terms here, when we replace x with negative x, we're going to get 1 minus x, we replace this x with negative x and that becomes a minus x. When we plug negative x in here for x, we're going to get negative x times negative x or negative x squared. That's going to give us a positive x squared, so we get positive x squared. When we replace this x with negative x, we'll get minus x cubed. What you can start to see is that we have an alternating pattern, positive, negative, positive, negative. This sequence has now become an alternating series. So we're going to go ahead and say plus dot dot dot. And then over here in our infinite sum, we're going to replace x with negative x. So we'll get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative x raised to the n power. Now whenever you have this situation here with this infinite sum where you have a negative 1 coefficient involved in this value here that's raised to the power of n, we can pull out that negative 1 to the n power, leaving just x to the n. So instead of this here, we're going to replace it with the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n power times x to the n. We haven't changed anything that's exactly the same. We could combine them back together to be the quantity negative x raised to the n power, we've just pulled out this negative 1 to the n. Okay, so now what we want to do is differentiate all three pieces of this well-known power series. And the reason that we want to do that is because, and, and this is why it's so useful to use this well-known power series and then change it slightly. Remember that when we differentiate a rational function like we have over here on the rule, and remember side. that quotient rule tells us that the denominator of our derivative it's going to be the original denominator squared. So we know that our new denominator, when we take the derivative, is going to be the quantity 1 plus x squared. Well, that is our original denominator from our function f of x. So what we're hoping for is that when we take this derivative, we'll be able to get a function that matches f of x. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. When we take the derivative of this function using quotient rule, remember quotient rule tells us that we're going to take the derivative of our numerator first. Well, the derivative of 1 is 0. So we're going to say 0 times the denominator, 1 plus x. Then we're going to subtract from that the numerator, which is 1, times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of our denominator is just 1 because the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of x is 1. 0 plus 1 just gives us 1, so we have 1 here, divided by the quantity 1 plus x squared because we just square our original denominator right here. 
we can go ahead as well and differentiate each term in our series here. The derivative of 1 is 0, so that's going to drop away. The derivative of negative x is negative 1. The derivative of x squared is plus 2x, and then we get minus 3x squared. If we kept going, we'd get plus 4x cubed minus dot, dot, dot. And then that's going to be equal to the derivative of this infinite sum with respect to x. Now this is where a lot of people get tripped up because they want to take the derivative with respect to n as well, and you don't need to do that. Remember that we're going to be treating n as a constant here. We're taking the derivative of this with respect to x. So because n is a constant, negative 1 raised to the n power is also a constant, and you can just think of this negative 1 to the n as a constant coefficient on this x to the n term here. So really all we're doing, we're going to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. The negative 1 to the n is going to stay, and this x to the n term here, we're going to use power rule. We're going to bring n down in front of the x. We're going to get n times x. And then according to power rule, we subtract 1 from the exponent. So we get n minus 1 here for our new exponent. And that's the derivative of this infinite sum here. Now at this point, we're just looking to simplify each piece of this. So first of all, in our sum over here on the left, we've got 0 times 1 plus x. We know that that's going to go away completely. What we're left with here is just negative 1 in our numerator divided by 1 plus x squared. And then that's going to be equal to each term in the sequence and then this infinite sum over here on the right. But notice now that our left hand side is exactly the same as our original function, but for this negative sign out in front here. This piece is multiplied by negative 1, where our original function is not. So all we have to do to get this left hand side to match our original function is just to multiply through this entire well known power series here by negative 1. We got to multiply everything by negative 1. That'll leave our left hand side equal to our original function f of x, which is what we were going for in the first place. So we're going to multiply by negative 1. This is going to become positive 1 here. And then we're going to multiply through negative 1 all the way through. So each term in this sequence here is going to flip its sign when we multiply by negative 1. So this negative 1 is going to become positive 1. Then instead of plus 2x, we're going to get minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 4x cubed plus dot dot dot. Then over here on the right hand side, we're going to multiply this by negative 1. You can think about multiplying this by negative 1. But when we have negative 1 raised to the first power times negative 1 raised to the n power, because those have like bases, because the base of both of those terms is negative 1, we can combine the two terms together and we just sum the exponents. So this is going to become negative 1 to the n plus 1. So we're going to get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. We just add this exponent here to this exponent here, n plus 1, because the bases are the same. They, the base of both is negative 1. And then we're multiplying that times n x to the n minus 1. Now at this point, we could say that this is our power series representation, and, and we could leave it in this form. But we really don't like to leave the x variable raised to an n minus 1 or n plus 1 power. We really like to, if we can, leave this x variable here raised to just n. It's the, it's the cleanest form in which we can represent our final answer. So how do we get this n minus 1 exponent here to become just n? Well, if we replace n with n plus 1, right, if we replace n everywhere with n plus 1, then in this exponent, we're going to get n plus 1 minus 1. Our plus 1 and minus 1 are going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with n here, which is what we want. We just want x to the n power. So what we're going to do is replace n everywhere with n plus 1. So we're going to say that our function over here on the left, 1 over the quantity 1 plus x, squared is equal to 1 minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 4x cubed plus dot 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 is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the, this becomes here, n plus 1 plus 1 or n plus 2, so n plus 2 
times this n here becomes n plus 1, so times n plus 1, times x raised to the n power because we get n plus 1 minus 1, the plus 1 and minus 1 cancel, and we're just left with x to the n. Now all we want to do before we call this our final power series representation is just reduce this n plus 2 exponent here. We should never really see anything other than n, n plus 1, and n minus 1. If we have n plus 2 or greater, or n minus 2 or less, we really want to reduce that to either n, n plus 1, or n minus 1. And here's what we mean by that. Our series here starts with n equals 0. So if we plug n equals 0 in for n, here we'll get 0 plus 2, which is 2. Negative 1 squared becomes positive 1, and that's how we get our positive first term here. But we really don't need that plus 2. If we just get rid of this plus 2 entirely right here, and then we plug in n equals 0, we'll get negative 1 raised to the 0 power, which is just positive 1. We get a positive 1, and our first term becomes positive. And that doesn't hurt us, because then when we plug in n equals 1, we get negative 1 raised to the first power, or just negative 1, which turns our second term negative, and so we get this negative 2x here, and that's great. So we really don't need to put in that plus 2. We can just write this as n. So this instead now is going to become the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n power times n plus 1 times x to the n. And that's our final answer for our power series representation. At this point, all we need to do is find our radius of convergence for this power series. And the easiest way to find radius of convergence, if you remember when we talked before about ratio and root tests, the easiest way to find radius of convergence is to use the ratio test. Remember that it says that L is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. And that says that whatever value we get for L when we take this infinite limit of this absolute value term here, whatever we get for L, if L is less than 1, then the series converges. This is therefore a very helpful test for us because all we have to do is evaluate this limit and then set our answer less than 1, and that'll tell us where our series is converging and therefore give us our radius of convergence. So what we're going to do is say that L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value here. Now we're going to do a sub n plus 1 in our numerator, which means we're going to plug n plus 1 in for n everywhere in our power series representation here. So we're going to get negative 1, and instead of raised to the n power, we're going to get raised to the n plus 1 power times, we're going to plug in n plus 1 for this n, and we're going to get n plus 1 plus 1, or n plus 2 times x raised to the n plus 1 instead of just n. So we'll get that in our numerator, and then in our denominator, we're going to get just our original power series representation, negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 times x to the n, and we're going to take the absolute value of that whole thing. Now here's where we start grouping our like terms together, the terms that have the same base. So here we're going to say this negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 and negative 1 raised to the n, they have the same base. We're going to subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. n plus 1 minus n, our n's are going to cancel, and we're just left with this positive 1 here in the numerator. So we have just negative 1 raised to the first power, or just negative 1. We'll just put that negative sign. We're going to have our n plus 2 left over. We're going to have our n plus 1 left over. And then here we've got x raised to the n plus 1 and x raised to the n. They have like bases. The bases are both x here like this. When we subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator, we'll get n plus 1 minus n. Our n's are going to cancel, and we're just left with the positive 1 in the numerator, so we leave that x to the positive 1 in our numerator like that. 
Now a couple things we can do, because we have these absolute value bars here, this negative sign becomes insignificant, that's going to be a positive sign. And notice we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So the only thing we have to keep inside this limit is terms involving n. We can pull out this x term here because that's not going to be affected by the limit as n goes to infinity. So what we're going to get is the limit is equal to, we need to keep the absolute value bars on the x, but we still pull it out in front, absolute value of x times now the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 2 divided by n plus 1. And what we can see here when we evaluate this limit at infinity is that if we plug in an extremely large number here for n and an extremely large number here for n, we're just essentially going to get infinity plus 2 over infinity plus 1. The plus 2 and the plus 1 become insignificant because they're so small in comparison to these infinite values here. So we're really just looking at 1n over 1n or infinity over infinity. And when we do that division, we get 1. We can also think about it this way. You can multiply by 1 divided by the largest degree n term, which is n to the first power over 1 over n to the first power like this. And when we do that, this whole thing then just becomes n times 1 over n gives us 1 plus 2 over n divided by 1 plus 1 over n. Then when we evaluate that at infinity, the 2 over n and the 1 over n go away because this constant divided by an infinitely large number will tend towards 0 and go away. And we're just left with here 1 over 1. So essentially, the limit as n goes to infinity just becomes 1. Therefore, the limit is equal to just the absolute value of x times 1, or just the absolute value of x. Now we have this value for L, and remember we said that the series converges if L is less than 1. So we can say that the series converges if the absolute value of x is less than 1. And remember when it comes to radius of convergence, we're just looking for the form x minus a less than capital R, meaning we're just looking for something in the form x minus some constant a less than r, which is the radius of convergence. Well, we essentially have that here. We have x minus 0 less than 1, where 0 is a and r is 1. Once we have our inequality in this form, we know that the radius of convergence is whatever constant we have over here. In other words, the radius of convergence for this power series is r equals 1. So that's it. We have our power series representation here. We've got our radius of convergence here. That's how you use differentiation to find the power series representation and its associated radius of convergence.